right, okay, good. I'm Chris. Hello, everybody. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about some list format, and it's been a while, and it's exciting stuff. So we're going to talk about something new here. And uh, when I do that, I like to show kind of where we are with list formatting. So when we first started out with list formatting, it was just column formats like you see here. Um, and, you know, if we take a look at kind of what's available, you'll see that we've got quite a bit more. All right. So in general, you've got a surface you're going to render to, right, whether that's a list view, web part, Microsoft list, you know, whatever that is. And there's going to be some standard UI elements, right, that are kind of all built in here. Um, and then you're going to have your data, right? So standard rendering looks like uh, Excel in the browser. Very exciting. But of course, you can then compile, you know, you can add all these column formats to one or more columns across there, and that's pretty cool. And then in addition to that, you can add a view format that is a row class. It's called an additional row class. And when you do that, you can combine that with your column formats, and it can just highlight individual rows based on whatever condition you want. Or you can go a little further and you can specify a row formatter where you can take that data portion and you can completely override row by row and draw your own stuff however you want. And you can even combine that with a tile props format, also known as the gallery, when you select that. And you can have both those in the same format. And then if you want to go a little further, you can hide that standard UI, right? And whether you implement your own or not, that's up to you. And then even then, you can have the groups, right? So you got your groups, and you got your group footers, and you have your aggregate footer down here. And you can apply group props to format it in there. And you can also apply a footer format here to apply to the aggregate row. It's getting kind of crazy. Even further, though, you've got the form. And by default, if you've got a column format, that's going to show up in the out of the box render to the form. All right, you can customize you know, what columns show up here. You can even do that conditionally based on expressions. But you can go forward and you can add a form header format and you can add a form footer format. And you can even control, it's not really a format, but you control the, uh, the number of sections and what columns are in those sections with the body layout. And now what we're going to talk about now is kind of the latest edition, which is command bar props. Ooh, fancy. Well, we're going to see what these do and how they kind of fit in with everything else. But I think it's important when we're looking at a pretty, you know, broad landscape like this, where we've got all sorts of stuff happening, right? And all sorts of different ways they can interact is understand these kind of fall in three major buckets, all right? So if we take a look at that, there's column formatting, view formatting, and form formatting. And the reason I want to call that out is because it makes a difference in where they're stored and so how they get applied to your list. So column formatting, those get stored with the field on the list or even at the site column level. And then it doesn't matter which view they're in. If you haven't applied a, you know, a full row formatter on it, they're going to show up uh, just like that. So you control them that way. Whereas view formats are applied to the view. So you can have all sorts of you know, numbers of these, right? So every view could have their own set of those. And then form formatting applies to the list itself. And so you really just have one set of those. So the thing I want to point out with command bar props is this will feel like a configuration item for the list, but it is not. It is a customization for your view. And that's going to be important because it will almost feel like you're doing something here with security or something else. And you're not. Uh, you're just changing how things look. And so which can be very, very helpful. And if you use that to keep things kind of an on rails experience and to guide users into what they need to do, that's the perfect use case for this. Uh, but if you're trying to lock things down, there are other ways to do most of that, right? And generally, that's going to be through security and permissions. Okay, got that out of the way. Let's actually take a look at what the heck we're talking about. So we go back to our classic Warrior Horses site. We get rid of that before Vesa unmutes. Perfect. Okay, so we come over here, and we've all got our Warrior Horses site, right? And we've all gone through, and we've deployed a recruitment tracker because we're trying to hire more horses. And we all know it's a, a horses market, right? So we've got to get those horses in here. Um, and so what we've done is we've deployed, you know, the standard uh, new template here for recruitment tracker. And that comes with a couple of uh, nice column formats around our choices. And that's cool. In fact, we've even applied a custom icon in here. And there's a video about that if you really want to look into that. What I'm more interested in today, though, is this guy up here. So we've got this command bar, right? So in the it, traditionally, we haven't been able to do anything with that, right? There are a few list settings that might affect some of that, right? Like you could have additional items in the new and so on. Uh, but let's talk about what can we do here. So we do that with a view format. So I'm going to format the current view, right? And so you can see I've already got alternating row styles added there. So if I jump into advanced mode, you can see that I just had that as a wizard. So that's there. So I'm going to actually delete that because we don't want that for now. Let's make that a little bigger. Now, you'll notice that when I select everything and delete it, I don't get any kind of IntelliSense really, right? So that can be irritating. That's because I deleted the uh, the schema reference. So if you do that like me all the time, just save an empty one, close it, 
and format the current view again. Go to advanced mode. Oh, I got my schema reference back, and I don't have to remember this strange URL, right? But the reason you want that, again, not required, but you want it because you get the IntelliSense, right? So now if I type C, I get command bar props. So I can hit that. And sometimes the IntelliSense auto selects the next one we hit tab. So we'll pretend that didn't happen. I'm going to type in commands. And then I get an array here. And now I can do something pretty cool, right? I could specify different commands here. And I reference them by key. So I type in key and I automatically get this IntelliSense. Now I'm not doing anything special here. There's nothing installed here. This is out of the box, right? So I start to see these are kind of the internal name for all of these commands. So we'll just start with the big guy here, the new button, because that's obvious. We'll say new, right? And if we type in new, it should be in there somewhere, but we'll just type it in ourselves. New, right? So that's our going to edit the new command. And the thing we're going to just say is hide. And we're going to say true, All right? Let's hide that thing. Preview that. Hey, we don't have a new button anymore. Wow, wow, wow. That's pretty awesome, right? So we can start to edit these buttons and change uh, some key things about them, right? So we can remove the new button. Now, again, we didn't really uh, prevent anyone from adding new items, right? So you can hit this edit and grid view and I can add a new item that way, or I can go through the API. There's a lot of different ways you could do that. So this is more about guidance, right? So if you're saying, hey, this is a list we edit through Power Apps. We want you to create new items through Power Apps. Well, that could be a great way. Just remove the options here as a good reminder um, to keep people kind of you know, on rails. Again, you're just providing some guidance around the experience so that you're not confusing users by giving them options you don't want them to use. Okay, so going a little further here, so we can hide it, right? Well, we can do something else here, right? We can actually say our text, right? So maybe this isn't new. We want to say, add something, you know, or we want to give us some other context, right? So in this case, we'll say that. Now our new button says, add something. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, and maybe we want to give even further and we want to say our icon. We hate that plus for some reason, all right? We want to say our icon name is cat because this is a list about cats, we'll pretend, right? So now we have our cat icon. And I'm getting those icons um, from the Fluent UI. And again, if you go to flycon.io, uh, you can search for all sorts of icons here. Uh, you know, and so if you type in new up here, you know, maybe you, you still see that plus button, but maybe you're like, ooh, but I want something extra fancy, right? This is a, you know, a comment thing. So I say comment add, I'm going to grab that. Let's go back there and let's change my icon name to that. And we'll preview that. And now we've got a nice icon. Again, we're providing some guidance about how we might want to do that kind of thing, right? So we can do icon name. Uh, let's go a little further, right? And let's say uh, title. I'm going to say, yeah, boy, right? Just making this stuff up. And now we get a tooltip that I don't know if you can see that way. You can't see it when I zoom, but there's a tooltip, right? So title affects the tooltip. So we can give a little more context, right? Um, you know, maybe we've renamed this. We've given it a cat icon. We want to say, just kidding. This adds a new item, right? So we can do that. That's neat. Um, and we can go a little further, right? So we could also say, um, you know, let's get rid of this new button or let's move the new button over, right? So now we're going to say our position. Our position is a zero-based index starting from the left. So this is position zero, position one, two, three, and so on. And so now we can say, actually, we want, you know, it to be over a little bit. So we can preview that. And what did I do? I've hidden the new button somehow. Ah, well, that's good. Well, the idea is we can move it over. Let's just go back and make sure we've got position and we'll put it at one. There we go. Make sure I'm not messing up. There we go. Position one, position two. How about that? Well, then you're going to have to believe me. <laughs> Let's try this again. Edit and grid view. We'll just switch it over to this guy. There is some interesting stuff with the primary button, so we'll come back to that as well. But let's go with position on this. So this is that grid view. Let's change its position to three. Let's see if we get that to work. There we go. So the idea here is we can reorder these. Uh, oh, I'm wondering if I typed it wrong. Oh, you're right. I see, Jim. I typed position. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Okay, so it is important to type these correctly. All right, so position three. All right, that's cool. I can actually go a little further. What if I wanted to say edit and grid view is my primary button, right? So let's get rid of that and let's just say primary. And I can say primary is true. And what primary does is it's going to affect that background, but you'll notice something strange here didn't actually do it. And the reason is primary true only works in position zero. So just keep that in mind. It's a little strange. So if you put it in position zero, then you could have it be that primary look, right? So I can turn that off and preview that and you can say, take that away. So that's pretty cool. 
there's a little more you can do as well. So the idea is here, if I want to take that grid view, I still want it around. I don't want to hide it, right? Um, but I want to put it um, out of the way. So I can say the section type, and in this case, I get two choices, overflow or primary. I'm going to say overflow. That's what's ever in these three dots. Now, when I do it, it doesn't actually move. And the reason for that is when you specify overflow only, you still have to specify position. So it's a it's an interesting little quirk. But if I put it in position zero, now it's over here in the overflow. And in fact, you could put all of these in the overflow. I'm not saying that's a good idea, but you could do that. All right. So and you know, we've got some other stuff here. Uh edit all button in the list form. Uh no, so we're not editing list form buttons. It's really just this command bar. Okay. So we're just editing things up here in the command bar. Uh, but we can do the section type. We can also get a little more advanced uh, with our selection modes. And let's take a look at an example where we'd want to do that in just a moment. But first, I want to show you that in almost all of these properties, right, we can do these, con we could say expressions in here, right? So we could say if, you know, and we'll say um, if our title, or we're going to say position call, our position, right, equals equals assassin. And let's, let's actually, let's make this the edit button. All right, and we're going to say uh, whether we want to hide it or not. All right, so we're going to say if the position equals assassin, right, then, yeah, hide that thing. Otherwise, you know, let's not. And so that looks a little weird at first, right? Now, I've picked one that isn't visible here, but it really only happens when you have a selection. So if I click Seabiscuit, hey, edit. If I pick Pokey, hey, edit. <laughs> let's do that again. Oh, edit and grid view. All right, so we got edit and grid view and so on. But the idea is here, we can write expressions to do all sorts of things. You could also simplify these expressions, not have an if statement. You could just have position equals, right? So you just have something that evaluates to true or false, and that will work as well, whether that's hide, uh, the title, the text, the icon name, um, position, and whether it's primary. You cannot do it for section type or the other one, which is selection modes. So let's look at an example um, of where I find this extremely helpful. All right, so let's just get rid of that, and we're going to go to another list. So we took a look. Um, and in fact, if you're interested in this, because we're not really going to go through this, we created um, a list. It has a flow associated with it. We created a button that only shows the, the flow when it matters, right? It'll only launch the flow then, and it has this idea of a progress. If you're interested in that, uh, David probably paste the link, but there is a video on our YouTube channel called Displaying Progress of Power Make Flows and your SharePoint Lists. And if you take a look at that, that'll walk all through that. But what I really want to look at is there's an issue here, and that's this automate button, right? When I pick this, I've got it automatically not selecting that, but I have an automate happens here, All right? That's got my rules, but it has my flow here, which doesn't actually make sense, right? I don't want to do that flow. Um, ooh, thanks, David. Great, All right? So I don't want to do that flow uh, at this time, so I really want to control that experience. And so I can tell you, just, ah, just ignore that. Don't click that. Also, request sign off. I accidentally clicked that one time. I, I don't remember how to remove it. You know, whatever it is, uh, don't click that either. So what can I do about that? Well, you might guess, that we're going to apply one of these things we just did. So I'm going to format the current view. All right, I'm going to go to advanced mode so I can write this myself. And we're just going to grab um, one for time here, and then I'll explain what it does. All right, let's make that a little bigger so we can see it. So what I've done is I'm targeting this automate menu. Now, the problem is, right, it's got rules. I don't want to take away rules in general, right? But I want to take away my items here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say selection mode. So I'm saying when there is a single item selected or a multi-item selected, hide it, right? I don't want it to show in those cases. In other words, it's fine to show right here, but as soon as you select an item, get rid of it, right? Don't make it an option anymore. And that takes care of that problem for me. And you can do that with all sorts of items, uh, which really, again, provides that guidance. So now we're ensuring they're not running the flow and doesn't need to run. We're only running through our kind of guided way, which you know provides guidance around the buttons and so on. So that's exciting. Woo! So that's that. And uh, I'm going to run over here, and I just want to point this out real quick. So take a look at this. This is the idea of all of the different things you can set, right? Again, uh, most of these things evaluate to true or false. You can write true in a string. You can write true without strings. That's kind of to you. Um, and everything but these last two can be expressions. So section type. And selection modes cannot be expressions, uh, just these guys. And if you're looking for more details on these, you can always click on that schema, and it will tell you everything that's possible uh, right there in the browser. Mm -hmm.